I have some fun fall color here with me today. I'm getting ready to head up to the road to plant my two big pots that flank my driveway. And I wanted to share with you some of the plants that I am putting in with those today. So the pots, they are out in full sun. They are huge pots. They are probably at least 20, 24 inches. Uh, so I needed a lot of plants to fill them. They currently have a purple fountain grass in them and um, it's starting to get some fall color in there. It's not a deep purple. Uh, it stays very, very hot up there and I don't get up there all the time to water them. They are in self-watering pots, uh, but just the summer with the baby, I just didn't get up there as much. So it's kind of fun that they took on uh, like a fall color already and they look kind of a little bit of green with a little bit of the brown. So I did choose my colors based on what is already up there. It is placed towards the back of the pot so that is what is going to be my thriller. So let me show you some of the plants that I have here with me today. So the next step down, these are going to be some of my fillers. And fillers are ones that are gonna take up the most amount of space. It's like your second level. That thriller goes flying out the top and gives height and, and swaying motion to your pots. So it makes it look really, really pretty and airy. And then you come down to your filler. So I'm going to use kind of two, three, it's, it's kind of different for fall. Um, but for the next step down, I'm gonna do the coleus. This is a sun coleus. Some coleus like the shade and some like the sun. This is particular by variety likes the sun. I don't know exactly what variety this is. Um, I just picked it up at the local garden center. So this is kind of a little bit taller at the moment. I'm not gonna pinch it down just yet. I wanna wait until I get up to the road and see how it looks compared to the height of the grass. But the sun coleus, they do put on a little bloom at the tips they're typically grown for their foliage so when that bloom starts to come you can just come in there and pinch it right off everywhere you pinch it will start to fill out so they can get kind of leggy and tall like this and then when you pinch them it makes them a little bit more bushy so i'm going to wait till i get up to the road and see where i want to pinch them back and um and play with the height when i get up to there my next step down is a marigold. I also don't know exactly what variety this is, uh, but marigolds, they stay a little bit lower, a little bit bushier. I know that they can get anywhere from eight inches up to 42 inches, depending on the variety. This one probably is gonna get not much bigger than this one, um, but it will fill out some. You also can deadhead these by just pinching off the bloom right here down where it kind of branches out. So they do need deadheading to kind of keep them looking nice and then it'll also also keep them full of blooms from now I might have to cut this with my pruners uh, from now until frost so these will last a really long time I usually go for a mum they're really fun fall colors everybody does but I wanted something that will go all the way till frost and have all these nice big blooms on them and give like this nice color these have a lot bigger blooms than a fall mum um, and then mums I feel like I'm either waiting for them to bloom if I bought them before they bloom or they're not lasting quite into um, that first frost. And so it loses some of the color uh, that I want for my pots. And so I thought this was a great option. This is the first time I've actually used them. They are drought tolerant, which is great because those road pots up there, they, um, you know, they're in the heat and they don't get uh, a lot of daily watering. They just get the water from underneath in the self watering pots. And they're also deer resistant. So these will be a nice pop of color against that fall grass that I have up there and then against that purple. Look at that fun combination. Look at that. I also have a little gold star black eyed Susan. So if you love black eyed Susans, you know, they kind of take on a sunflower look um, and some of the bigger varieties, you know, get bigger. And so this is a smaller variety. It stays about uh, 16 inches high by 16 inches wide. Um, it's drought tolerant. Uh, so another great option for up at those pots. And this is a perennial down to zone or up to zone four. Um, so this will come back. So the two things that I showed you are annuals and so once the frost comes they'll be done they'll be gone the marigolds they actually uh self sow so if you are putting them into the ground they are an annual but they will self sow and those seeds will sprout again for you next year more than likely these are a perennial so these will come back so what I like to do is I have a 50% roll for my spring and my fall pots now my summer I'm not worried about it too much because 
summer annuals they put on so much weight and they're so inexpensive um, they just give so much bang for your buck over the summer times and they're because they're so cheap I'm not worried about having a pot that is mixed with annuals and perennials to be able to save those to put them into the ground sometimes I do and sometimes I don't for the most part it's my petunias they put on all that weight and all that trailing length and they're just so beautiful but for the spring and the summertime they're in those pots for such a short period of time I feel like I don't want to waste my money on annuals because they just don't put on as much weight in that first year especially in the spring and the fall so what I do is I have a 50% rule for myself for when I go, come in and do these pots and so 50% of what I plant in those pots has to be a perennial because I'm still building my landscaping here on the farm I want to be able to take those out before that first frost hits and get them into the ground and have them come back next year so this is one of those plants and I'm super excited to have these two add these to my landscaping uh, so I did get four of them uh, they will they probably will not put on a ton of growth as it starts to get colder but i did get four of them in case i needed to bulk up to kind of match the weight of one of the marigolds uh, but we'll see so i may only use one in each pot and i might use two of them if i don't use both of them i'm going to plant some of these up at the the sign up at the road so i kind of add that color over there i think they're so fun for summer and with them being drought tolerant, I just don't get up there enough to water. And so I think these will be a good option for there, but I just love them. They make a great little cut flower too. The last one I have is a forever purple hookra. These are coral bells and I love coral bells. I think they have such fun colors. This is another perennial that will go into the ground. They are hardy down to negative 25. They're a zone four through nine and they get the same about as these, they get about 14 inches high and wide. They like a moderate amount of water um, and they can go sun or shade. So I'm super excited to have these to put in my landscaping. Also, I think when I go to plant them, I will still put these two together because I think they are just such a fun color. This is going to be my spiller. And so these will kind of hang out over the side a little bit, um, but this won't spill out so much, but I will plant it probably at an angle so that it does kind of spill out over the front and give some of that, that length and that bushiness out over the side. So I don't have a true spiller for these fall pots, but it's kind of fun to mix it up and get some uh, fun colors in there. Summertime, I always have those big spillers coming out over the front. So we're gonna head up to the road. We're gonna get these planted and get them fertilized in. I will put them on a fertilizing schedule from now um, until almost that first frost. Um, I'll probably back it up just a little bit because I don't want these to put on too much growth before that first frost before I get them into the ground um, so that tender new growth uh, won't get nipped by the cold um, so I'll probably fertilize them uh, probably for at least a couple more weeks um, and get the, some good growth on them get some good root growth on them into that pot and then when I go plant them into the landscape I'll share that with you so let's go up to the road and get these planted